just uh, overfilled this week knowing that 38 souls got saved. Yeah. What a blessing. Yeah. I've been preaching for a long time, but I've never witnessed the things that I've witnessed this week. Uh, Amen. Down on the creek bank the other night, baptizing one and uh, three more got saved. Uh, two or three, I know two did, I think three. Got saved up on the creek bank. Amen. Uh, yeah. I tell you what, God. I tell you what's a blessing is this. Most time a lot of people go to church and they, they watch their clock and they just can't wait, brother, when they need to get out, dash home to sit in a recliner and eat chips and drink pop and watch TV. But you know, uh, this week, I. Uh, uh, just seen people fellowship and brother went in. Uh, we went got something to eat last night, come to Wayne, went back by New Vision and went in and was still in the parking lot. And uh, I said, George, you want to turn around? He said, no, I want to go home. You know? <laughs> but it's just been a blessing, you know. Uh, and I thank God for that. And I count a great privilege to be a part of this a uh, great privilege to be a part of these two young men that has preached with fire and brimstone yeah. this week. Uh, I can tell you that uh, I've heard some of the best preaching and you two close your ears so your heads don't swell too big but, uh, some of the best preaching the best singing that I've heard in years and I thank God for that and, uh, my brother uh, told me the other night that uh Chance could teach me how to preach, you know, so uh, <laughs> I'm going to send him and Caleb back home. They're killing me. You know? <laughs> but this is time we stand. And we're going to ask uh, Brother Paul Michael Booth to take us all in prayer. Let's, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord, today with, uh, with appreciation and thanksgiving. Yes, thank we thank you, you for another day thank you, and for all the needs of life that you've bestowed yeah. upon us. Lord, most of all, we want to thank you for the relationship that we enjoy with you yes. each and every day. Glory to God. We want to thank you, Lord, that you are our hope, you are our foundation. And Father, we're just so very thankful and appreciative of what we've experienced this week. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would burn it into our hearts and in our minds, Lord, because we may not ever get to see anything like this again. I hope that we do. Yes. Father, I pray that the revival, Lord, will begin to spread now. Lord, to do all it, the different Jesus. churches, do it, all Lord. the different sanctuaries. Lord, that we would see a great outpouring of the Spirit of God yes, within Lord. our community. Yes. We pray for our dear brother tonight, Lord, as he stands and begins to minister and serve yes. the Word of God. We Bless pray, you. Lord, that you would anoint him with your Spirit. Lord, that you would make the message clear and concise. <laughs> And I pray, Father, that you would penetrate the hearts of those that's here that's lost and in this. And, Lord, that your spirit would draw them to an altar of prayer. We love you, we praise you, and we give you thanks. In Christ's name, amen. 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 Let me say this to you tonight, Walsh. You're here and you don't know Jesus. I want you to know that Jesus wants to change your life tonight. Yes, he does. Uh, and he can change your whole outlook on life. Uh, being saved is the best thing uh, that you could ever ha happen to you. Amen. And I want you to know tonight that the Lord wants to save you tonight, is willing and wants to save you tonight. Yeah. Uh, you're the reason that He went to the cross. Uh, you're the reason that He suffered all the agony that He suffered on the cross. And, yeah. and you're the reason He got up out of the tomb on the third day. Yeah. Yeah. To prove that He was the Son of God, as Brother Caleb preached last night. And you can be saved tonight. You just got to surrender to the Lord. Amen. And give unto the Lord your heart, your soul. You say, well, preacher, what if I can't live it? I assure you this. Paul said I can do it. The Bible says I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. Yes. I want you to know that when you get saved, God just don't save us tonight and leave us out here on our own, Brother Lenny. He puts inside of us the Holy Spirit. Yeah. It helps us be able to live a Christian life. Amen. So tonight, if you want to be saved, please come tonight and be saved. I'd like to see before this revival's over, everyone under this tent that don't know Jesus, yeah. and know Jesus before Amen. you leave. Yeah. The best friend I've ever had. Amen. Best friend. As they say tonight.
Bless your brother Dan. You know, I've uh, never been more privileged in my life to be with my neighbors than I have this week. I, I love Wayne, and I love what God has done here this week. Hadn't he done a great thing? Yes. 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 Let's give him a praise. Hallelujah. God has done something wonderful. I thought about all these young men and ladies that have been saved, have come to God, and some that are elderly, and I thought... God, how the church has been blessed this week. Yeah. How that we've seen birth in the church. And yeah. I'll tell you what, it's good to see all of us brothers come together and just yeah. say, the only thing that's important is to lift up Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. God has been good to us. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We're going to sing, I'd rather be an old time yeah. Christian yeah. than anything I know. Yeah. How many of you feel that way? Amen. Amen. Let's praise Him.
take a minute and say that I'm thankful. That they asked me to just take this little part. Bless your heart. Glory to God. It's such a great undertaking. And if you've ever, now, I feel like we've got an awful good choir for us. Where I go to church and I'm the song leader, I'll say, I don't know what the choir is. But if you've ever, if you've ever tried to learn to lead a choir, man, you guys, all I got to do is just start it. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are an awesome choir, I'll tell you. And I've never had the honor to, to lead a choir like this. Well, give yourself a hand. Before turning back over to Danny, I'd like to say that I've lived here all my life, and that's up in the 70s, but I don't know anywhere on this earth they've ever had any better singers than we have in Wayne County. Amen. Can you say amen? We've seen something this week. We've seen something this week that I've never seen in my life, and I've said that already. But children, God is here to change lives. Yes, yeah. And we, we've got needs on our streets and in our homes around here we've never had. And I'll tell you, it's time God's children get where they need to be so that the gospel can be spread in the homes and the homes can change and our neighborhoods can change. Yeah. Our young people are facing things today that they've never faced. Yeah. Moms and dads are facing things they've never had to deal with. But I'll tell you the God that these two little brothers of ours have been preaching this week, He's the answer to it all. Yeah. 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 Can you say it? Yeah. Never in my life have I heard better preaching than we've had here this week. Amen. And last night, I think, was probably the icing on the cake for me. Yeah. I've been preaching the gospel for a lot of years. And I know some of you brothers have been preaching it. And some of you singers have been singing about it. But I'll tell you what, last night, I believe the gospel of Jesus Christ was brought out as clear Amen. as I've ever heard. Amen. 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 Brother Paul Michael, I don't believe I ever heard it preached any better than last night. Amen. God's Word is good. Yes. And God is good. And God loves us. And I hope this thing just grows till Jesus yeah. comes. Amen. I thank God for this man too. Praise the Lord for what God has used him to help him. Well, I say glory today. Glad we got a great Savior. You know, yeah. Uh, tell you this tonight, if you're going to have an opportunity, lost to be saved, it ain't the church giving it to you, it ain't the preacher giving it to you, it ain't me giving it to you, but Jesus is going to give you an opportunity to be yeah. saved. Tonight. Yeah. Please take Jesus up on that opportunity. Yeah. You know, Bless uh, they always say that you know life is full of opportunities. I want you to know that the best opportunity you have tonight is Jesus. Yeah. You know that? And he said something about Wayne County singing. This young lady here who I've grown to love with all my heart, uh, very special, she's from Lincoln County. <laughs> so you're going to hear some of the best of the Lincoln County singing. Yeah. All right? uh, come on up here. Let's give her a hand. Yeah.
Savior standing yeah. at the door. And then I hear him say, Welcome, all your cares are left behind. And you
It's me and you So when I 
Bibles and go along with us. Luke chapter number 11. We're going to start at verse number 1. We're going to start at verse number 1. Luke chapter number 11. Start at verse number 1. I'm going to say this tonight. We understand that there's a lot of new Christians under the tent. So as we preach tonight, you keep that in mind. They need somebody to encourage them. They need somebody to lift them up. Somebody to instruct them. Amen. Revival is not only for them that are lost, but revival is for the church. And sometimes the church needs edifying. Amen. So you just bear with us tonight. You pray for us. Uh, I said the other night, uh, when I'm done preaching tonight, you're really going to think I'm crazy, but your wife is too. So, just bear with me. Amen. Brother, it says, And when they came not to Jerusalem, under Bethphage and Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, he sent forth two of his disciples, and saith unto them, Go your way into the village over against you, and as soon as you be entered into it, you shall find a colt tied, whereon never man sat. Loose him and bring him. And if any man say unto you, Why do you do this? Say ye, The Lord hath need of him, and straightway he will send him hither. And they went their way and found the colt tied by the door, without, in a place where two ways met. And they loose him. And a certain of them that stood there said unto them, What do you loose in the colt? And they said unto them, Even as Jesus had commanded, and they let them go. And they brought the coat to Jesus and cast their garments on him. And he said upon him, And many spread their garments in the way, and others cut down branches off the trees, and strolled them in the way. And they that went before and they that followed cried, saying, Hosanna, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the kingdom of our father David that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. I want to preach today on this topic. Uh, we've got a lot of new Christians under the tent. We've got a lot of young people under the tent. I want to preach on this topic. You are the Lord's donkey. Yep. So real quick, uh, just go along with me. And you say, I am a donkey. Man, y'all are poor tonight. You say, I am a donkey. I am a donkey. Now you identified as a donkey, you're committed, all right? Uh, so uh, the Bible tells us in the book of Job, he said, And though a vain man be born wise, he will be born like a wild a donkey coat. And uh, there is actually a place in the Bible where a donkey talks. And I mean, we don't have time to go in, into all that, but I mean, you'll find the talking donkey in the story of Balaam. But uh, just to give a little introduction to what has happened here, uh, there's a donkey tied uh, over in the city, and Jesus sends two disciples there and sends them out to the disciples, and, and uh, uh, the donkey I want to focus on tonight, uh, though the donkey's so overlooked, the donkey's the center of the Lord's mission. 
The donkey oh, is the center of the Lord's mission. You find that uh, Jesus, before this had just happened, had walked 90 miles to get here. Uh, the donkey didn't have to be there. Uh, but the donkey must have been used for this certain text and this certain passage. Why? Because it was the plan of God. Because it was prophesied in the book of Zechariah that Jesus would come riding in a donkey. It had to fulfill the plan that God had set out. And you find yeah. that the donkey, the Bible says as soon as you get there, you'll find a donkey tied where on never man said. Uh, can I say today that uh, the donkey didn't have to be there but it was at the right place at the right time and it was ordered by the right person. Yeah. Listen to me, Lord Spirit. Uh, you're here at the right place at the right time yeah. and you're ordered by the right person. It's no yeah. mistake tonight that you found yourself under the tent. Amen. Why? Yeah. Because the Lord has need of you. Yeah. The right. Lord has need. And but more than that, you have need of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. You need Him more than you. you need your next breath of life. But you find that the Bible says that your steps are ordered by the Lord and that this donkey was purposed to meet Jesus. And yeah. maybe tonight you're purposed to meet Jesus. But yeah, I mean, you find that the donkey all through the Bible is a symbol of humility and of peace and, and of service. And I'm going somewhere. Uh, you just bear with me. You see, the Lord's donkey it is called to service. Uh, you young Christians, uh, people of all ages, churches, we are called to the service of the Lord. Amen. Are you willing to be the Lord's donkey? Are you willing to work for the Lord? We live in a day and hour. In 2023, they ain't nobody wants to work anymore. Amen. Nobody wants to I get about the Father's business, get about the service of the Lord. Number one, we find that the donkey was selected to carry the Lord. The Bible says that when they came uh, not to Jerusalem and to Bethany, and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent forth the two disciples and uh, saith unto them, Go your way, and as soon as you get there, that you'll find a donkey tied there. You find that Jesus made clear arrangements to have the donkey there. Bless him, Lord. Jesus made clear arrangements and had the donkey there. You see, out of the donkey must have been selected. Oh, by the way, the Bible says that I have chosen you and you have not chosen me. I'm not talking about your calling. I'm not talking about what God's called you to do. I'm simply talking about what every Christian needs to be doing. And that's simply being about the service of the Lord. Why? Because Jesus has called you into the service of the Lord. And you find uh, today that, uh, yeah, that you are the Lord's transportation. You are His access way uh, to other people, to lost people. Uh, you new Christians, you are simply the access way uh, to glorify the name of God and to be other uh, people that are lost. Friend to the altar that, they would, uh, that way they can be saved. I mean, you see that the donkey had an important assignment. Yeah. It was not something yeah. to be taken lightly. Right. He had a job to do and a job to do right. Yeah. He wasn't just carrying some uh, unknown person, uh, but he was carrying the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Yeah. And you see, you got to take your yeah. job yeah. uh, serious yeah. in the uh, ministry and in the work of God. It's yeah. not something to be uh, taken lightly today. But you right. see yeah. that Great. not only was the donkey selected, but the donkey must be sanctified. Uh, here's where people start ducking. Amen. The donkey <laughs> yeah. must be That's sanctified. Good. Listen, God, I cannot look upon sin, let alone ride upon sin and use sin for his transportation. Uh, there must be a difference. And though people may get mad all they, all they want to, uh, there must be a difference in a Christian and a lost person. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody that is saved must be sanctified. Yeah. Somebody that's going to bring other people to the yeah. altar yeah. Uh, must be sanctified and set apart. Uh, there must be a difference in the yeah. world. Yeah. Yes. I think they're not saved. Yeah. Amen. But you see that there was a cold tide went on every man said. This donkey was sanctified. There was something different about this donkey. Uh, young people, uh, this donkey had not walked through the paths of sin, had not walked in places where it was going to be torn up and destroyed. Listen, uh, young people, you've gone in just in time. Amen. You've not been abused yeah. and neglected by the devil. Uh, you yeah. still have uh, power and energy left in your body yeah. to do service for the Lord. An old meal is not of much use, but one that has not been used by the devil. Amen. By the way, the Bible said the harvest is great, but the laborers, they are few. Yeah. Yeah. He said the fields are wide and ready for harvest. Yeah. Yeah. But the yeah. laborers, they are few. Amen. By the way, you know what donkey's good for? Plowing the field. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Getting all the wheat. You know, everybody that's still out in the field, all them that are lost, and bringing them in. And you see that in 2 Timothy chapter number 2, the Bible says, If a man therefore purge himself, speaking of sin, Purge himself of these things, he shall be a vessel unto honors, yeah. sanctified, 
sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every a good work. By the way, yeah. God's not looking for no-show transportation. Amen. Amen. You ever heard of something waiting on a woman? <laughs> My girlfriend, her mom told me one time she's going to come pick me up. They said, be ready at 11. Noon came, they still wasn't there. <laughs> Two o'clock came, they still wasn't there. I was beginning to get upset. Hey man, somebody's gonna have to tie her down when we get out of here. All right, about three o'clock goes around. They finally I show up, but I was so mad by the time they got there that I didn't want to go no more. <laughs> but anyway, uh, the Lord is looking for faithful uh, transportation. What about a preacher? He's not looking for somebody that's going to take him to church on Sunday morning and then live by the world to win. Amen. Amen. And then he's going to say, I'm going to lift him up and going to take him wherever uh, they go to school, to the workplace, uh, to the store, wherever they go. Yeah. Yeah. And then Jesus uh, up. He's yeah. looking for Preacher faithful uh, transportation today. Uh, you see that uh, the donkey also must be prepared for the Lord's work. The Bible said that, uh, that they brought their garments and laid them on the donkey. And that made the donkey prepare. But I want to say this. You can take all the lust and the pride and the popularity and, and the fear and all the anxiety. Or whatever it might be and pile it on your back. And you take the room for Jesus out of your life. You yeah. get your mind so focused yeah. on things of the world and, and what the world has to offer you. And then you take the room that Jesus desires in your life and have no room to take yeah. into the multitude Preacher. of people. Yeah. So you must be prepared to do the Lord's work. You see today that the Bible says, Show yourself approved, the workman unto God that needeth not to be ashamed. Yeah. The donkey also must be submitted and yeah. sacrificed. And in Romans chapter number uh, 12, the Bible says, and I love this Bible verse right here, I present your bodies, yeah. young people, present yeah. your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. service yeah. Which is yeah. your reasonable yeah. service. Yeah. And right here, and be not conformed to this world, yeah. but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may yeah. prove uh, what is the good and acceptable will of God. You yeah. see, so many people take the word transform in this Bible verse and use it too much. Amen. They think that they can transform to be a Christian one day and a shit of the next. Huh. Yeah. Amen. That's not what it means. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise yeah. God. You listen to me, young people. Uh, that is your reasonable uh, service. And by the way, uh, Jesus was on the own. The donkey didn't decide where it went, but the Lord controlled where it went. Amen. 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 The Lord will direct your path. The Lord will take you where He wants you to go. It yeah. may not always be where we want to go. That's right. The yeah. Lord will take us on the path yeah. of righteousness, the Bible says, for His name's sake. Yeah. Amen. So you just trust wherever He's taking you. I trust wherever He's going. Don't fight against Him. I'm going to just trust where He's going. And you find the results here uh, in the Bible. You just hold on. You go with me. Uh, the results. And uh, you see what happens with us, church. Uh, we get ourselves put together and prepared and sanctified and submitted to do the Lord's work. Uh, the Bible says that Jesus came through. Uh, riding on the donkey, he said, and they spread their garments uh, in the way. And he said that they strolled them in the way. And they uh, went some that went before him. But there was also some that followed if we get ourselves out of the way and get ourselves in order, uh, there'll be more people begin to follow God. Uh, begin yeah. to follow yeah. Jesus yeah. and to trust Him for who He is. And you see that uh, the reason Jesus came through on a donkey is that way He would be lifted up and the people on the back would be able to see yeah. Them that weren't up close to Jesus, uh, them uh, that were on the very back row where the, uh, the donkey lifted up where they can see. Uh, by the way, we need to be talking to people that don't walk in the church doors ever. Right. Amen. They're not up on the front row yeah. where they can yeah. see Jesus all the yeah. time. Yeah. And it's the people that you don't want to talk to, and that you don't want to see, that they look like oh, they ain't worth talking to. They're worth talking to too, church. Amen. 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 They still need Jesus. Yeah. They still need to be a, a saved. Amen. It's a for that person that came Amen. to talk to you. Amen. 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 Yeah. Yeah. You just bear with me and you find that as Jesus was lifted up there, the Bible says this, go ye into the highways, and the hedges preaching of the gospel to every creature. By the way, I was looking at the characteristics of a donkey. And it says that they're good and rough terrain. Yeah. Yeah. Go ye into the highways and to the hedges preaching the gospel to every yeah. creature. Yeah. And it's not always yeah. easy. Yeah. The highways were, I weren't always the best place to be. The hedges, they weren't comfortable to be in. Right. But there were still people there that needed to be saved. Yeah. And so we got to lift Jesus up. If we're ever expecting to see revival happen in our nation, oh, we must get ourselves out of the way and lift Jesus. Is up he said, if I be lifted up, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. It's all about the name.
name of Jesus. That, that's the only person that's all out. Not only were they good enough to rank, but he said that a donkey was territorial. Yeah. We got too many people selling out their salvation too cheap. Yeah, yeah, amen. Hey, man, getting far away from God, moving farther and farther away. Last By the way, Lord. you're a donkey. You're a prey of the devil. The Bible says he walked about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he, he may devour. Yeah. Yeah. What do you mean, preacher? The devil is out to kill, steal, and destroy you. Yeah. He's out to devour your ministry. But oh, we yeah. need people that are territorial yeah. about their salvation. I mean, when the yeah. devil comes and tries to destroy them and tear them down, that they draw the blood on them and say, they ain't yeah. nothing but yeah. my salvation. And yeah. nobody's taking it from me. That it means something to me. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That's where our uh, way we must be territorial about our salvation. But there's much more to the message than that. There's much more to the message than just being saved. I want to take you to where the donkey was at before it found Jesus. You can go with me in your Bibles. Lost friend, look at where you're at before you find Jesus. By the way, we do what we do because we love Him and love what He done for us. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But look, the Bible says that go your way and you'll find a colt tied by the door. As the colt was tied before He found Jesus, so you tied to your sin. Amen. The Bible yeah. says that sin is like a snare trap. But he's got you locked down and it's being so like that there ain't nothing going to pry out. Right, and as yeah. the altar invitation is given every night, and you sit there and you feel like the devil's got your hands tied up on your shoulders and you try to fight it and you try to wiggle and get yourself out of the snare yeah. trap. But there ain't nothing you can do. Why? Because sin's got you tied up. Amen. Yeah. Like he had Brother Caleb tied up the other night. The yeah. Bible says that in his own iniquity shall take the wicked himself and shall be uh, holding him with cords yeah. of sin. Yeah. Got him tied. Feel like you're bound to your sin. Oh, but I got good news. Good news. I've never found a prisoner. Amen. I'm too locked up that he couldn't free. Amen. Never found a knot too tight. I that he couldn't untie. I never found an attic. I that he couldn't clean up. Never found a yeah. snare too tight. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible says that the name of Jesus, Satan has to flee. Amen. You're not oh. tied too tight to your sin that Jesus can't set you free. Yeah. Yeah. Good news. Good Amen. news. He might have been tied to his sin. But the Bible says he was tied by the door. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You know what Jesus said? He said, I am the door. Yeah. No matter how tied up you are, Jesus is just around the corner. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Jesus is right there to help you and pull you out. Yeah. Amen. He's, not, he's never far away, but he's right close to you. The Bible said, Behold, I stand at the door knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and he will sup with me and I will sup with him. Yeah. Do you hear the Lord knocking on your heart, your heart's door? You're close enough to be able to hear Him knock. And you see that He was by the door. The Bible said that He found Him tied by the door without. Without. Yeah. What was He without? He was without Christ. The saddest place, the saddest I say to be would to be find yourself without Christ. The Bible says to be without Christ is to be alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, of being strangers of the land, having no hope and having no promise. Yeah. Having no promise of what, preacher? No promise of heaven. And the promise that after this life is over that you'll see your family again. And that you'll Amen. see your children again. And that's what it's like without Christ. Amen. Having no hope yeah. and what yeah. tomorrow brings. Amen. Living every single day knowing that if you died in your sin, that that's all that there is. Yeah. That's where you find yourself out if you're without Christ today. Without peace in your life. But, uh, but Jesus can come and give you peace. That, uh, the passive yeah. all understanding. The Bible yeah. says that, uh, that a wicked man is as the waves of the sea that are tossed back and forth having no peace. The brother that took, got baptized and saved the other night. He said, I went home. And he said, I couldn't sleep all night. Yeah. I said, praise the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. He said, I tried and I tossed and I turned. I couldn't sleep. Amen. I call that Holy Ghost conviction. I uh, get on it. But there was no peace in his life until he found Christ. Yeah. Yeah. I believe that the night that he found Christ and he had more peace in his life than what he ever had. And he probably slept like a baby. He probably felt better than he ever felt before in his life. Because he had found Christ. Man. Yeah. He did have peace. Uh, you're also without strength. The Bible says, I am that while we were without strength. Christ yeah. died for us. And, and he was out without the promise of heaven, without all these things that Christ has to offer before he came to Christ. All right. And he was at he was tied by the door without, but he also found himself in a place where two ways met. Yeah. Found himself in a place where two ways met. What about it, preacher? 
Night after night you've been here, you're at a place where two ways meet. Yeah. You're at a place where it's heaven or that it's hell. Yeah. Which one are you going to choose? Choose you this day whom you're going to serve. Yeah. Yeah. Choose you this day whom you're going to serve is what the Bible says. You're at a crossroad. The crossroad is waiting. Where you're going to go, the Bible says, enter in at the straight gate. For straight yeah. is the gate and narrow is the way that leadeth unto heaven. But broad is the way that leadeth unto destruction. Which one are you going to take? Yeah. Yeah. You're not tied to your sin any longer. Jesus is there. And you just found yourself at the crossroad. And the decision is in your hands. Yeah. Where are you going to go? He's, the Bible says, I've said before you, life and death, blessings and cursings. Yeah. Therefore, choose life. Yeah. Yeah. The choice is in your hands. Yeah. Jesus said, I am the way, yeah. the truth, and the life. Yeah. If you just choose Jesus, you choose the right way. Yeah. Yeah. Joshua said, for me and my house... We're going to serve the Lord, and I pray that that would be your choice. But you see that you've got a choice of eternal life. You've got a choice of eternal damnation. Any wise man would say, well, I know which one I'm choosing. Hey, man, but why do you stay in your seat? Yeah. See, that's such a simple choice. Hell, fire, eternal life in heaven, that's so easy. Yeah. Why do you stay in your seat every night at the altar? The call is given. You see that I can never preach a message without preaching on the cross. And you may not know this, but I... But you can find that on that cross that Jesus was riding, it was just foreshadowing the fact that Jesus was going to hang on the cross because on that donkey's back would have found a cross. You see that it was foreshadowing the fact that Jesus would uh, then go to the cross and, and then on that cross that He would hang and die up for the pardon remission of sin in, in great agony and great pain because it was the will of God that's one that was 100% God and 100% man, but He was sent from heaven and to die for all of sinners in this world. Yeah. You see that Jesus in great agony hung there on the cross and they came and they mocked Him and, and they beat Him before they took Him there and, and tried to dehydrate Him and He did it all. Did every bit of it. Every single bit of it for you. Yeah. Amen. Last thing, Lord. You see that Jesus Last when He was Lord. born was born in a moral stable. That He yeah. laid in a borrowed manger and that He borrowed a donkey theologians believed to travel and then he brought this donkey and then he'd have to borrow an inn to stay in. It didn't belong to him. Yeah. Then he'd have to borrow a cross to stay on. Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking about our Savior. Amen. And then he had to borrow a tomb to lay in. It didn't belong to him. Everything that he did in his life was borrowed. What about it, preacher? you got a choice to make and you're living on borrowed time. Amen. It does not belong to you just any day now. Just any day now. When will your life come to an end? When will Jesus come back? I'm done. I'm not going to keep you very long. But friend, you've got a choice to make tonight. You've got a choice to make tonight. Choose you this day whom you're going to serve. We're going to choose to serve the Lord. As if somebody stands and gets a verse of song. Hannah. What are you going to choose? tonight that you can be useful in the hands of God. But before God can use you, you must surrender yourself to Him. You must humble yourself down at the feet of the cross that He may save your soul, that your sins might be forgiven, and that you might be filled with the Spirit who will then lead you all throughout this life. But first, we take the opportunity to give Him. Choose the way that's straight and narrow. We remain in your sins on that broad road that leads to destruction. There's only two ways, two places. Which one are you going to choose? There's no amount of power that is strong enough to hold you in your sin. No amount of power that is strong enough to hold you in your sin tonight. If you truly want Jesus, 
so they know that you need Him. He has need of you and you have need of Him. Would you accept calling for you? Calling for you. Oh, uh-huh. 
have to say thank you everybody for coming out tonight. It's a great place to be. We see that the Lord is still at work. His hand's still moving. So come back tomorrow night, pray and say. Also, be having a baptism directly following service down at New Vision. All that can and will uh, come join us. We've been going to the creek um, about every night during this revival, and we've had an absolutely wonderful time. We sing songs of praise. Uh, we see the Lord uh, at work once again, and we even see souls saved there in the creek. Bank. So, uh, we'll be back tomorrow night. Tell as many as you can. Uh, we're worried that we're, all of our flyers and all of our posts said we were in on Sunday and people haven't heard that it's still going. Uh, so get the word out, tell as many as you can, and uh, be much in prayer for the service tomorrow night.